right here. And like being, being the great friend that I am, I thought we could use this as like a hashtag led Lola campaign, you know? I love it. Okay. I was thinking about that also. It's like any platform that I can get to like try and encourage LeBron to put me exactly. in Space Jam 2. So he follows me on Twitter. Maybe he'll see this video. And, or it, it, or maybe he'll unfollow me. I don't know. We he's know LeBron is going to be watching this, of course. <laughs> you know what to do. Hey everybody, Amanda Smith here with NBA TV and NBA on TNT. Host, reporter, and overall just a fantastic human being, Kristen Ledlow. Thanks for being on my laptop today. Thank you for asking me. Um, I like the sweatshirt. Oh, I like your jersey. Like, this is crazy. Okay. No, Do I you feel like people should know that we did not plan this. I've just been watching your features, and I watch that you wear something that that person likes or does or is. And I was looking in my closet like, all right, what do I have that will represent me that maybe she may not be able to match? And of course, the second that I see you, unplanned, that is what you're wearing. So not that you're not already extremely busy, uh, but with the regular season coming up, I can imagine your life is about to get a whole heck of a lot crazier uh, because something's always developing, right? Like just this week, for example, Jimmy Butler speaks out for the first time about his situation in Minnesota. Uh, what are some of the storylines that you're most looking forward to following? Oh, goodness. I First of all, I love that the NBA drama is already in mid-season form. It's like what we wait for, you know? Like, we wait for the season to get going because it's like, all right, there's only so many ways we can break down preseason games. We wait for the season to get going, and then we get really excited once, you know, kind of all-star comes around, and then, like, we're psyched once the playoffs roll around. I mean, the drama is already at an all-time high, so why wouldn't we be excited? Um, I, uh, let's see, this week, for opening week, I have – the Warriors ring night, which I'm really excited to be part of. I'm intrigued to see whether or not Russell Westbrook is, is cleared and ready to play uh, for the start of this regular season. Um, and then a couple of days later, I have LeBron's opener as a Laker. It still is throwing me off a little bit to see him in the purple and gold. I'm not going to lie. It's I was watching your Instagram story the other day, and you're like, favorite Laker right now, LeBron. Like, that's weird. Yeah, uh, right. Because, first of all, I've never been asked who my favorite Laker is. And I think in the past, sorry in advance, Laker fans, I would have, I don't know, none of them. I've never been a Laker fan. So now, you know, the best in the game and one of my all-time favorites is a Laker. It's like, what do I, am I a fan now? I don't know. I don't know how this works. I'm not used to seeing him in purple and gold. It took me a little while to get used to seeing him, uh, you know, in the Miami Heat jersey. But then it felt very natural. It, it, it felt like a very natural fit for him. And then when he went back to Cleveland, it's like, oh, there it is. That right there. That's what fits. Um, so to see him out in L.A., I, I, I think that it fits where he is as far as this point in his career, as far as the season of life. I just selfishly have not gotten used to it yet. <laughs> and this soon, too. This jersey. I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing you as part of that as well. Talk about it. Put it into the right. atmosphere. For me, it's not even like putting it out in the universe. It's just like assuming he's actually going to hear it and probably get annoyed of me asking. So it'll be like, okay, fine. It'll be like, fine. Okay, I get it. And it's not even really like, like I don't even need a big role. I don't even need like, you know, to be the voice of Lola Bunny, though that would be a dream. I just want like, even if I could just like sit in the stands and watch the actual game against the Monstars, assuming they'll do a Monstars. I don't know. I don't know who the opposing team will be. Right. Maybe I can coach the opposing team. I don't know. I just want to be part of it in some way. Well, not only are you going to be a part of that, you've got us covered all things NBA, uh, but you take the time to help young reporters, like myself included, uh, to kind of navigate our way through this industry. Like, I'm not kidding, guys. Kristen will do one-on-ones or coaching calls or watch your reel and give you feedback. For you, why is it so important to turn around and help the next in line? Thank you. Goodness. Um, one of the things that Doris Burke told me very early on in my career, and she's the best that there is, the best to ever do this, and now a Hall of Famer, and it is well-deserved, um, was that it was special to be the first or the only, but that it meant very little if you didn't blaze a trail for the ones behind you. Um, and I remember very vividly the women who chose to speak into my life and into my career very early on, um, 
And I'm so overwhelmingly grateful because I feel like it set me up for success, not just in this industry, but um, in life, in the season of life. And so for me, it's it's significant to, to be part of the NBA TV team and to be part of the NBA on TNT because it's such an iconic brand, such a special thing to be part of, such a special team to be on. But it would mean far less if I let it stay there and didn't continue to invest in you guys solely because that's where that's where the, the industry is headed. I, I mean, Doris Burke once told me that, that one day she thought the world would be mine. And so to think that some that I could tell that to you or to, to someone like you and for it to mean even half as much as what it meant to me when she said it to me is it's just it's, it's more than I ever could have asked for. Because this job in and of itself is is a dream come true. Um, but to be able to think about investing in the dreams of the women coming up behind me is so much more significantly important and, and gives me such great joy. I think I probably get more out of it than you guys do. So it's also kind of selfish. <laughs> so in case you didn't already know, Miss Lemo, you are a very popular lady. Um, we well, have so many fan questions for Kristen this week. Uh, so I want to get to as many as we can before we run out of time. But first, I'm a lady of my word. I want to stick with our little Space Jam theme here. Yes. And I want to know, so we don't know if there's going to be Monstars, right? But in your world, who would you cast? Okay, so as the opposing team, against, we're, we're assuming it's LeBron and the Looney Tunes against fill in the blank. Exactly. All right. We've seen people put together ideas for a villainous team, and it's like five all-stars. But if you're going to go with villains, you've got to go with guys who could carry that well. Uh, assuming that they don't go with the same old plot, that it's five all-stars whose talent is stolen, and then these cartoon characters, you know, team up to beat LeBron and the Looney Tunes. Assuming we're putting together an actual team, um, I'd have to go Blake Griffin, because he's a great actor. He's very, very funny. He also, there's something about him that I think works as a bad guy. I don't know. I probably wouldn't repeat that to his face. Hopefully he's not watching this because I really enjoy him. Don't be sure to tag it. I don't agree. <laughs> it's fine. We won't, we won't tag him. We'll just assume he's not watching this. But I am a Blake Griffin fan, so I'd go with Blake. Uh, I think you have to go Kevin Durant as well, right? I mean, it's like he's kind of become known as the LeBron opposer. Exactly. Opposition, opposer, is that the right? Yes. It is the Either right. Way. On the other side. Right. If you're a LeBron fan, he's the villain. Of course, mm -hmm. if you're a KD fan, LeBron's the villain, which kind of makes the whole Space Jam thing. But, okay, I'd probably go Blake Griffin, Kevin Durant. I think Anthony Davis should be involved in some capacity, just because he seems to kind of look like a monster, right? Like, think about the guy, how they're built, how they're, right? Again, which doesn't sound like yeah. a compliment, but AD, in case she tags you and you're watching this, I think it'd be the right fit. You know what? You could just scratch this and just go with the entire Golden State Warriors. Why don't we just make it LeBron, the Looney Tunes against the Warriors? Are we talking about the regular season or? Right. <laughs> wow. That's such a good point. That right there was a metaphor for the NBA basketball season. It was a season. metaator for the 2018-2019 season. Yeah, there it is. We're going to get to some of our fan questions now. So, Solly Lowe would like to know, right now, is there anyone in the league that can even compare to LeBron? I don't think that there is a player that is comparable to LeBron James. I think that he's the greatest in the world. He's the greatest currently playing the game. And once he's retired, I think that he will likely go down as the greatest of all time, which I'm aware sounds blasphemous wearing a Michael Jordan Toon Squad jersey. But I do think that highly of LeBron. When I think, though, about players who could be comparable, perhaps that's not the right word. Because when I think of other players who could end up being the greatest in and around the LeBron James era, I think about Kevin Durant. His skill set is... It's truly spectacular, but he doesn't have the, the same uh, body type as LeBron. So, so he's had to, to be successful in a different way. Um, the same way that I think about Stephen Curry. You know, so many consider him to be the very best in the league as well. Um, and, and he's done it entirely differently because he's 
but shorter, much smaller, but he's quick and he's, and he's, he's tricky and, and he's uh, brilliant when it comes to his, his offensive creativity. So, so no, I don't think that there's anyone comparable to LeBron currently in the NBA, but when I think about the greatest in and around this era, uh, I think about guys who have, who have done it in different ways. What do you think about Anthony Davis coming out and saying that he's the best in the league uh, and should at least be in that conversation with a LeBron or a KD? It's funny that you bring up AD because as I was thinking about who could be the greatest in this LeBron era, he is one that continuously comes to mind because he does have the stature. He does have the skill set on both offense and the defensive ends. Um, I do think that he should be in and around this conversation. I'd love to see an entire season of him healthy and him leading his team to a playoff run. Um, but I, I think that if anyone has the natural God-given skill set, the natural uh, stature with the skill set that he's developed, um, it would be Anthony Davis. And another that I would probably consider in that conversation that's just right outside uh, of those top couple of players in the league, but I think could absolutely be there, is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Again, because of that God-given that he has, with the skill set that he's continually developed. And I love that AD came out and said that. And I love that Giannis continually says things like that because it says you're confident enough to carry on that crown. Uh, one of the things that I asked LeBron uh, years ago at this point, I mean, it had to have been before his most recent championship with the Cavaliers. I asked him who he thought was the best of all time. And he said himself. And I was like, all right, so no Michael Jordan then. LeBron James says it's LeBron James. And he's like, it's not about LeBron James saying it's LeBron James. It's that the greatest in the world would know that he's the greatest in the world. And so I love that some of these younger guys who are coming up behind LeBron are willing to say it's themselves. Mr. William Teague would like to know what has been the funniest or the most memorable interaction you've had with an NBA legend? Oh, an NBA legend. Okay. We get the is flowing. It's your right. thinking face. So... What's tough is I have so many stories about Charles Barkley that we don't have enough time to go into the funniest or most over-the-top moments with him. So we're going to set Charles aside. Okay. And let me think of another NBA legend that perhaps I've had the funniest and most over-the-top moments with. I, it probably shouldn't be guys that I work with because it's like the obvious answers are Charles and Shaq. And right. Of course, we've had hilarious moments. Of course, they're over the top all the time. Um, and now Grant Hill is an NBA legend. He is in the Basketball Hall of Fame. He told me that I have to introduce him as that always now. You held up to your word. That's true. Guys that I work with aside, I have a very memorable moment. I wouldn't necessarily consider it over the top or hilarious, but it's the most memorable. It was for me one of those kind of welcome to the NBA moments. And it was with George Gervin, the Iceman, in San Antonio. And it was during the, I'm not even going to mention the year because I don't remember, NBA Finals between the Spurs and Heat. And we were out at the River Rock, which is where so many in San Antonio and so many NBA fans know, uh, you know, go to hang out, um, especially before and after these games. It's an incredible NBA atmosphere. Um, so we were there and we did an interview actually riding on the boat through <laughs> the River Walk. And by the end of it, hundreds, and I'm not exaggerating, of fans had crowded around the shores of the river, yelling his name, chanting the Iceman, chanting Go Spurs Go, chanting inside stuff, which was crazy. And for me, it was just one of those moments where I looked around like, I can't believe that this is my actual job. And it's not even just with those guys that are that are NBA legends. It's, it's sometimes with the current guys. Like, there was a very memorable moment for me last season um, at the TD Garden interviewing LeBron. And at the time, he was a Cavalier. And and for some reason, when he said, thanks, Kristen, and walked away, it's like I just took in the moment and looked around. And it's like, goodness, there are all these Celtics championship banners hanging up around me and all of these fans that are so overwhelmingly excited just to witness this moment. And I get to talk to LeBron James with a TNT microphone in my hand, and those moments are just never, ever wasted on And the best in the world calls you by name, right? I, right. That also, the very first day that I hosted Inside Stuff, um, on our very first episode, they had a bunch of guys currently in the league uh, just record what ended up being, you know, a minute-long kind of 
you know, welcome Kristen, welcome Grant, that's the inside stuff, that kind of thing. And LeBron did that. And, and as I was leaving, I said out loud to Grant and to our entire crew, LeBron James knows that I exist. Like, <laughs> what is that? Like, how did this happen? <laughs> so, so no, those, those moments are never wasted on me. And yes, they still feel surreal all the time. You speak a lot about your faith. Payne West would like to know, how do you incorporate it into your work? Ernie Johnson is so incredibly special to me. Uh, for those who don't know or who have been living under a rock, he's the host of Inside the NBA on TNT. And he told me a long time ago in regards to his faith that he had been a game changer. It had been a life changer when he stopped thinking about trying to impact the millions of people that were watching or the hundreds of thousands of people that were giving feedback online. He stopped thinking about them and started just thinking about the three men sitting next to him. And so I've tried to approach my job and my platform with that perspective. Yes, I want to take care of the platform that I've, I have been given, and I am supremely aware that there are hundreds of thousands, and on some nights, millions of people listening to the words that I have to say. That is not wasted on me. But instead, I've shifted my focus to thinking about impacting and investing in the men and women that are that are around me on a daily basis uh, the men and women that are helping to define our, our current culture and so yes it is about speaking up for those who can't who don't have the kind of platform that I have been overwhelmingly blessed with but it also for me was a game changer when Ernie told me that about simply focusing on investing in the people around me let Dominic dunk someone let the man dunk jeez <laughs> would you play Rachel Zamita one-on-one? <laughs> no, I think that she's a few years younger than I am. I might be wrong. I don't know exactly how old she is. She and I have spent some time together. It has been so much fun. We actually took a trip to London together, which was an absolute blast. Totally. Um, but yeah. I would not. I will tell you why. Because she's significantly quicker than I am, and her knees do not seem to be as torn down as mine are in my old 30-year-old age. No, so, I would no, like... I would not do it. I was, like, going to be like, would you play me one-on-one? -on -one? But I don't want to play you one-on-one, -on -one, because I have, like, I would tear something for huh. sure. Right. Well, so, so my go-to now is I play horse a lot, and I play with the guys that I work with a lot, which is really fun. I actually have never lost in a game of horse to Grant Hill, and I'd like that. I'll make that sure we're reporting on that. I've never lost in a game to Grant Hill. I've never lost in a game to Grant Hill. I want to make sure that everyone knows that. But, no, that's my go-to. I play horse, but, but I don't do one-on-one -on -one anymore. I just don't move the way that I used to. Okay, Kristen, someday I challenge you to a game of horse because I think I'm pretty good. Okay, that I could do. That I would be willing to do, without a doubt. Owen Tambor wants to know, what is the best thing about you? I thought I could take this one. Oh. <laughs> because not only are you brilliant and a true professional, you are one of the most generous and have one of the most genuine hearts i'm not kidding that i've come across and i think that that is so hard to find you did not tell me in advance that i had to cry in this interview <laughs> <laughs> no, serious like i tell kristen all the time and i hope that you know people who watch this or just get to interact with you know how special that you are because you truly are one of a kind and i am so lucky to have you in my life goodness thank you so much thank yeah. you well, I know that we're all super excited uh, to follow you this NBA season. We'll see you yeah. soon. Yeah, soon. It's happening. Like, I, I, I'm, we can tell the people. We had to reschedule this, like, four times because in the last couple of days alone, I've had, like, an added dozen things to do that I wasn't prepared for solely because the NBA season is right around the corner. Thank you again for doing this with me today. Thank you again for having me. You are doing such an incredible job. It is so rare to see a young woman as driven, as directed, and as smart as you are want to celebrate other women, want to learn more about what it is that they do regularly on a daily basis, what it is that makes them successful. You not only embrace that, but you celebrate that, and you are without a doubt coming up behind us, and this will all be yours soon, and I'm so thankful that you asked me to be part of this.
Kristen, why are you going to make me cry now? Like I this? know. It's like, oh, should we stop? Should we cut it off? Yeah. Didn't wear waterproof. Okay, guys. Oh, I'm, okay, now. I'm, done. I'm hanging up on you. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us today. For Kristen Ludlow, I'm Amanda Smith. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.